Mark Cavendish to take yellow in Harrogate. Simon Gerrans will win stage two and take the yellow jersey with it. Vincenzo, Vincenzo Nibali is not going to make it. Hody, 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 don't forget Tinkoff Corner. Next year we win Giro. Okay. So following on from our glorious pre-Tour de France predictions, we're going to start with that this week. Who was it, one side? Well, yeah, why don't we start with the big news of the week, Dan, which is that my neck brace has finally come off. Ready? No, nobody gives a shit about that. Tell us who won the Tour de France. So Vincenzo Nibali won the Tour de France, just as I suspected he would, right back before the tour had even started. He won four stages and put an incredible seven minutes and 37 seconds into second place, Jean-Christophe Perrault. However, he did show a sign of weakness. On the last stage, he lost 15 seconds to Perrault. Perhaps he was really starting to crack. Yeah, I think some definite chinks in the arm there. Who knows what would have happened had there been a fourth week at the tour. Maybe he would have come 130th or something. <laughs> Anyway, it was a great tour for the French. For the first time in 30 years, they managed to place not one, but two people on the podium. Jean-Christophe Perrault, few would have predicted him to be the one that did it. 37 years of age, an ex-mountain biker, standing on the second step on the podium in Paris. And Thibaut Pinot of Francis de Jure, he confirmed himself as the great white hope of French cycling. Quite literally, in fact, because third place overall also gave him the white jersey as best young rider. It was Peter Sagan who won the green jersey. Well, that's not particularly newsworthy, given that he pretty much won that competition after just stage two. Last week's Caption of the Week competition winner was Kanos7 with this. All right, let's be honest, who did it? Get in touch via Facebook or in the comments section below and we will send you your new GCN water bottle. And for another chance to win a bottle, here's this week's picture. Once again, so I will get you started. Media attention on Joaquin Rodriguez was slightly less this year than in previous tours. <laughs> That's really good, sign. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> now, who remembers who said this just after receiving a late call-up for this year's Tour de France? Well done for those of you who remember that was, in fact, Rafa Maika. 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 It's uh, Rafa Maika. Our guess, though, is that he's quite pleased to have received that late call in the end because he's gone home with two stage wins and the polka dot jersey as best climber in the race. In fact, I'd say he's probably really, really pleased, bearing in mind that his team owner and our favourite Russian, Oleg Tinkov, promised to buy him an Aston Martin. After he won his first stage, he said that if he won a second, he would go and buy him a brand new car. Apparently, Tinkov did try to wriggle out of that promise live on the Belgian TV channel Sportser, on which he appeared with Mike here, and we'll keep you updated on this riveting saga over the coming weeks. In GCN Strava Club this week, Louis Pierre Dupuis once again tops the distance with 1,259 kilometres. And new recruit to GCN Strava Club, Rob Knuff, Knuff. climbed the highest amount, which was 27,000 metres. And for the second week running, Pastor Greg Locke did the longest individual ride, 602 kilometres this time, taking him from the outskirts of Phoenix in Arizona, 27 hours later, arriving at the Pacific coast by San Diego. So, a decent ride, although he did fail to take any KOMs en route. Did you ride last week, mate? Yeah, I did uh, about an hour and a quarter on Monday. <laughs> Put it up on Strava. Done nice. lots of kudos. Can we scroll down the um, total distance ridden list and see how you got on? Where did you come? 4,560th? Let's see if we can <laughs> arrange by kudos. I should be top then. <laughs> Making its debut on Sunday ahead of the men's race was the eagerly anticipated La Course. It's hoped that over the coming years this will be a regular feature or maybe even a multi-day stage race to go alongside the men's Tour de France. The race itself was a dynamic event, eventually taken out by perhaps the most fitting winner, Mariana Voss of Rabo Live, who outsprinted Kirsten Wild of Giant Shimano. A few people have noticed what looks like a dropper seat post gracing one of Vincenzo Nibali's spare bikes. We spoke to FSA, manufacturers of said post, to find out what it actually does. This prototype post is an intriguing idea. It allows a rider to adjust their seat height on the fly by individual millimetres. A twist of the wrist and the post either raises or lowers by precisely one millimetre. 
FSA are tight-lipped about the weight and it may only appeal to a limited number of riders, but it's an interesting innovation. And given that Eddie Merckx used to race with a 5mm Allen key in his pocket to raise or lower his seat post, maybe even now there are still some high maintenance riders that might want to do the same. Maybe. And the winner of our Wiggle bike competition is James Nunnally. So congratulations to you, James. That bike will be on its way to you. We did notice, however, that you are quite excited about the fact that Dan has built it. Please check it yourself. That's all I'll say. Plenty more content for you on the channel this week. On Monday, we showed you how to put together a bike which you've bought from Chain Reaction Cycles and how to ride in a group. On Wednesday, we'll show you how to improve your cornering speed. Cornering more quickly is often just a case of gradually increasing your speed as you become more confident in both your own ability and of your equipment. However, technique is also vitally important if you want to get the most out of yourself and corner quickly, smoothly and safely. And we have a competition with a difference. On Thursday's top 10, if you can guess which riders Matt and Dan are impersonating, then you could potentially win yourself some GCN kit. Four, this Italian legend fell from grace, but his climbing style will live on. If you can explain the shower cap as well, then I personally would be very grateful. Uh, um, um, what one thing could you not travel to races without? Uh, oh, um, uh. Friday, something of deja vu for me, but Tom Last asks pro riders which their favourite travel companions are. Is it definitely going up this week? I don't know, mate. I don't know. It's good, though. It really is good. And on Saturday, we're going to take a closer look at the Bianchi bike ridden by Bulka Molama. Mojima. Tweet of the week is this from Taylor Finney. Chicks, um, dig scars? Wow, that does look particularly nasty. We wish you all the best, Taylor, and hope you make a full recovery. You've got a lot of scars, haven't you, Dan? I've got my fair share, I must admit, yeah. So chicks really don't dig them? What do you mean? And talking of Twitter, after Team NetApp Endura announced their new main sponsor for the next few years, Bora, many people started following at Team Bora. And it wasn't long before said account announced a new three-year deal for their star rider, Leopold Koenig. 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 <laughs> However, it later emerged that the account was a hoax. Just goes to show you, can't believe everything you read on Twitter. Who would have known? So it's been an absolutely cracking Tour de France. What was your personal highlight of the race? I think for me, stage five was absolutely brilliant. I absolutely loved the fact that the Tour de France was on the cobbles and the fact that it was wet just made it one of the best stages that I can remember. What about you? Uh, I think for me personally, I'd probably say stage two, 10, 13 and 18, all the ones Nibali won basically. Those, those were great stages. Mm. Right, that's it for this week. If you're getting Tour de France withdrawal symptoms, do make sure that you check out our Tour de France playlist where you can catch up on everything that we shot out there. Who's that an impression of then? Nairo Quintana will not be on the podium at the Vuelta Espana this year. That's a good shout, that. And here's a sneak preview of this week's competition, Impressions. No, no one's going to get that one, mate. No one. Number one, this rider has spent many hours on our TV screens in breakaways during the Tour de France and his gurning is almost as famous as his race results. Dude, definitely do loads of this, mate. Nairo Quintana Nara will not Kutana. make the podium. Can you pronounce Molima? <laughs> Mojima. Boca Molima. Boca. Boca Molima. For more GCN Top 10s, click here. And if you haven't yet subscribed, simply click on Matt. You know it makes sense. <laughs>